to look at this chlorine that we mentioned here. And many of you were around during the First World War. And do you remember the use of gas masks by the troops in Europe with uh, the First World War? That was to prevent the chlorine gas that was used in an attempt to use biological warfare with the troops during the First World War. It was chlorine gas that they used. Well, guess what, folks? That same chlorine gas is generated every time you take a shower. And in fact, you inhale more chlorine taking a shower than you do even drinking eight glasses of it a day. Probably haven't thought about that and its impacts on your lungs. Nevertheless, getting into a swimming pool and swimming in chlorine, you absorb through your skin the largest organ in your body, chlorine. Things you probably never even reflected on. Well, when I put that chlorine with a body, and let's take a vegetarian to begin with, and say, well, I only eat vegetables. I can't imagine anything toxic would interfere with my body. Well, when vegetables decay in the body and they mix with chlorine, they turn into another compound. And the one that they turn into is trihalomethane. And you can say, okay, so what's trihalomethane? How many of you take your clothes to the cleaners to get them clean? Yeah, the occasion to, to go to the cleaners, okay? Well, the cleaning fluid that they use to clean your clothes is trihalomethane. So you can imagine that what you're introducing to your body is trihalomethane or cleaning fluid. Terrible thought. The cancerous effects of trihalomethane have been very well documented. And you say, well, I don't understand. Why would they do this? Well, let, let, let's take another example because you're not vegetarian. So we'll make you a meat eater. And you say, well, I don't have any problems with that. Wrong. That decaying meat stuff in your bowel, for all of you that have one bowel movement a week or uh, one bowel movement every other day, turns into a fine paste in the digestive tract. And it that paste deposits along the blood vessels and stiffens or hardens the blood vessels. So instead of being flexible pipes, we've now got these hard steel type pipes within our system. And you wonder about where your high blood pressure came from. You wonder about hardening of the arteries and what's going on in your heart. Let's try a little chlorine in your system in terms of not being able to utilize or move out some of the things in your bowels. You know, the old middle-aged spread that uh, guys take for granted is something that's supposed to happen. Wrong. A lot of that, the hardening that's going on there is because of the elements that are in water itself. Then we add, what, what, what else do we have there? Well, the government has already decided that it can't use chlorine I and mean, they can't add any more chlorine to the water. They recognize that there are a lot of bacteria, viruses, and fungi that they would like to kill. But if they add more chlorine, they know that they're stepping into some very toxic levels. So what are they adding additionally to make things more, or to make them more safe so that they're not as dangerous from an infectious disease perspective? Guess what they're adding, folks? Mercury. Now, for all of you that know about the old amalgam scenario in terms of not having amalgam in your teeth and how it reacts with the body, you know the toxic nature of mercury being in the system. And guess what else? They're not required to tell you that they have mercury in the water. The laws are written so they only have to tell you about chlorine. <laughs> they don't have to tell you about mercury. In Michigan, in Washington State, in Washington, D.C., mercury is added to the water systems. So you get an idea that perhaps it's not the, the safest thing in the world to be drinking at a time when I'm saying to you, drink more water. In fact, that's what got me into this in the first place. You know, I got across to my patients that, yes, you should drink more water. And then they turned back to me and said, okay, doc, what water are we going to drink? And I got stumped. And it really has taken me around the world to try to find some of the best waters and the best things to use in your water that will help you have safe and clean water. Now, what about the old fluoride scare? What in the Dickens is going on with fluoride? There have been debates back and forth. There have been um, 
blow-ups in different legislatures as to whether or not fluoride should be used. The study that originally talked about fluoride came about during the 1930s, and it was done at the Carnegie Mellon Institute. Now, Carnegie Mellon happens to be one of the biggest <laughs> benefactors of the aluminum industry, with Alcoa Aluminum. The aluminum industry has a problem. They don't know what to do with the byproducts of making aluminum. And in fact, around any aluminum plant, you'll find there's no vegetation for miles. And any animals that happen to be grazing in farms or whatever near an aluminum plant, you'll find dies very and ages very fast. Well, the same thing happens to you if you're exposed to fluoride. Your body will age doubly fast. So a 30-year-old will look like they're 60 years old. And in areas of the world where fluoride is naturally, these people do age very, very fast. In addition to that, going back to that study which says we should add fluoride to the water because it will prevent tooth decay in children. Wrong. When they tried to repeat that study, and that study was done by a benefactor of the aluminum industry at Carnegie Mellon, when they tried to repeat that study, they found it was not correct. And in fact, it caused further decay of the teeth. In other words, it enhanced decay of the teeth rather than preventing decays. I don't know if you're aware, but fluoride is the chemical that's used, that's injected into zoo animals and the bulls and the bullfighting rings of Spain to keep them docile. In Russia, while the Iron Curtain was still down, I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but they added fluoride to the drinking water of all the prisoners to keep them under control. I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why fluoride perhaps is being added to our drinking water, but it's there. Lead, I think many of you are familiar with the toxicity of lead. In many of the older cities, the pipes were all made out of lead. Or where the pipes are joined together, lead was used by the plumbers to keep leaks, the soldering of the pipes in the middle, lead was used. Now, lead has been known for years in terms of its toxicity to the brain. It goes directly to the brain and can be a cause for death. Now, many of these elements are very, very toxic, and the people that absorb them the most are fast-growing tissue, which would be our children, so that often we see the toxicity in the children with many of these heavy metals and the gases. So you want to be aware of that. In fact, there was just a year ago an announcement in the Seattle system of the worry about lead in its water systems. It's very high in a number of the old houses in Seattle. There are a number of old houses here in this area. So don't think you're out of it just simply because you don't live in a big city. Many of the old farmhouses still have lead as the basic pipes that they use, the old galvanized pipes, or the solder used in the pipes are made of lead. So you may want to you know, take note of that. Now I thought that we'd move from there, and uh, let me just say, we're in a world where the word filter versus purification system, as we move into this new century, are the terms that we're switching from. To the American public, First question they usually ask is, what kind of filter is this? And they've gotten pretty used to um, looking at carbon filters and looking at water conditioners and things being added to the water, okay? That's old technology. You know, that's the technology of the 70s and the 80s. Yes, um, charcoal type filters will take out odors, will take out smells, will take out um, uh, basically gas types of materials and their smell from the water. But that's all they do. You want to know about what things will actually convert the water into a drinkable or to a live thing that you can absorb into the body. About 25 years ago, and through this community, we had people very much interested in BEV water. And what did BEV water mean? BEV stands for Bioelectric Vincent standing for Dr. Vincent's name out of um, France. He decided to come up with a standard 
that could be used for measuring how toxic water was. And so things were divided into what we call BEV units. 